Guys, sorry uh, about my tardiness. I had some things that came up that I couldn't not handle at the time. So appreciate you being patient. Uh, Jimmy, give him an extra couple questions. How's that big? I know it's a big day coming coming off that uh, that weekend. Um, not a great weekend for our team, obviously, but really a great weekend for two of our women's sports teams, uh, our women's soccer team got all the way to the finals and then lost a really tough game and then our women's field hockey team won the Big Ten championship and I think that's the first championship tournament that we've won so women's soccer won the uh, regular season championship and got to the finals and then field hockey won the uh, the tournaments so that's awesome right I mean that's that's something that when we got into the Big Ten we set out to win championships as a university, and from afar, I, I got to witness it, and now to be part of it is exciting to me. And now we got to do our part in football, and uh, you know that's, that's what we do. We're relentlessly trying to do that. Uh, after last weekend, it uh, it could be you know discouraging, but it's not to me. It's disappointing, but it's not discouraging. Um, we just need to keep working, you know, as we say, keep chopping, and. Uh, and it'll work. We have some injuries we're going to have to overcome. Uh, I don't know a lot of the, you know, definitive will they play, won't they play. Um, but if they play, it'll be on limited practice. So that worries me. I don't care how good a player you are. Uh, but, you know, I know they won't go out there tomorrow and practice, which is our padded practice. So, uh, yeah, it's concerning. But that's, that's why you build depth, and that's why young guys got to be ready to step up. And sometimes they're not young guys. Sometimes they're, they're uh, you know, guys that have been here for a little bit, and now they get their opportunity. So um, I'll try to answer any questions about that the best I know. Greg, are there any guys you can definitely rule out, specifically Aaron, it, it didn't look good on the replay? Yeah, Aaron Crookshank is out for the season. Um, and... Um, I really feel bad for him because he he came back from his shoulder injury that he sustained, and then he uh, he had a knee injury that uh, he's going to need surgery for. So, yeah, that's um, I feel really bad. He's such a competitor and such a a great representative for us. But you know what? We'll surround him. We'll help him through it, and he'll heal. You know, medicine being as good as it is now, he'll be back. Just gonna he's going to have a a change in in kind of goals right now for a little bit. Uh, until he gets back to playing. Greg, give any update on Noah? Noah is, uh, you know, I think Noah's going to progress during the week. Um, I think he'll be available. I can't tell you that for sure. How do you kind of handle the quarterback reps with that uncertainty? Well, Sean and I, you know, right now we're we're in the midst of game planning, so we're kind of game planning generically, but uh, in about 40 minutes we'll kind of just make some personnel decisions, and then I think that play calls will kind of get funneled to whoever it is that we, we think will be the starter. But, again, there's no science to it because Noah may be fine, and, you know, then, then I think we have a little broader base plan. Noah really understands the offense by far the best, um, and then it kind of experience level drops there seen with this current group of uh, offensive line that you've been starting these last couple of games? You know, we actually, I mean, I know some of the runs were when the game was out of hand, so I really don't judge that. But early in the game, we ran the ball more effectively than a lot of people have against them. So I, I was pleased with that. I thought Pop ran hard. I thought Kyle ran hard. I thought the O-line opened up some holes. I thought offensively, schematically, Sean did some things in his staff that gave us a chance to run the ball. So that really wasn't one of my biggest concerns you know like we doubled the average yards they allow or close to it on the on the ground you know the turnovers are, are the whole story to me that's that's the game how do you prepare for indiana with the uncertainty at quarterback i'm thinking that the true freshman might pl uh, might start but uh, Penix has said that he wants to play again how do you prepare for him with a little bit of uncertainty it definitely is a factor uh it's a great question um sarge because they are uniquely different depending who's playing. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. They, they uh, literally, when you watch them last week, uh, they're different. So you just try to do your best. You make some assumptions, but you better be ready for everything, right? Um, that's really, you know, we've been here before. Over the years, that's happened many a time, and you try to find out as much as you can. But, you know, 
coach has been around a while. He's not gonna he's not gonna be volunteering information. Coach Allen's coached this game a long time, and he knows how to play it close to the vest. So we'll we'll do our best to be ready for whatever they come out and do. And the good thing for us is the mix we get from our own offense, from our season in the Big Ten, and then the last two weeks. We've basically seen it all except, you know, true wishbone uh, football. So we have at least a a background in a lot of it. Um, But when you look at what their current quarterback does, it's a lot of quarterback run game. It's quarterback gap schemes, which really are different, right? That changes the math in a big way. And gap schemes are when you pull people. It's a down, 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 pull people around, and then the quarterback follows. There's usually fakes off it to make you you know, go defend other things. And then here comes this big six foot five quarterback running downhill who runs like a running back. He gets down his behind his pads. And he's a physical runner. So yeah, it'll be uh it'll be a challenge. Greg, recently it seems like you guys have been struggling to uh pressure opposing quarterbacks. What would you chalk that up to and is there any plans in the future to draw up a couple more blitzes? Um I agree statistically we haven't gotten the sacks. Um I look at, I love sack, I love sack fumbles more than sacks, but I look, are we putting pressure on the quarterback? Are we, are we affecting the throw? That's, that's what I look at. And we haven't been doing it enough. Uh, will we put more blitzes in? I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to, I'd like to find ways to, we blitz already, you know, so for us to say more blitzes, um, but third down, what I have found, you know, we're doing a good job on third down statistically on defense. Um, as far as getting off the field. So, you know, that's that's when you're really designing pass rush type blitzes. First and second down, we've played some teams that can really run the ball, so we better make sure we're sound on the run. And then when they run play action pass, we got to find a way to convert. And that's something I think we have to improve on as a defensive line. We're playing the run initially, convert to a pass rush move, and be effective in doing it. Uh, but that's something we're working on. The offensive numbers, I, I know numbers aren't everything, but yards per play, it's all basically equal to last season. Why do you think it is that it hasn't translated to points this year? Um, I think the takeaways are way down. I mean, if you look at the field, there was a lot of short fields last year. There's not as many short fields. And if you don't hit big plays, then you have to really execute at a high level for a long time to score. Short fields make it easier to score. So we haven't taken the ball away as well as we did a year ago. So that's something we need to do in these. You know, I thought when we got that early one, that was going to break the break the seal and away they go. But that was it. We only got that one. How is your kind of approach to navigating this program through a rebuild, kind of the highs and lows compared to the first time that you were here? considering that you now have that experience of having gone through it before? Yeah, experience is a good thing, uh, for sure. The only thing the first time is, you know, when you don't know what you don't know, you just keep swinging harder and harder. Now, sometimes you're swinging harder and harder into the wrong direction. But um, that's a beauty of youth, right? Experience, though, I think outweighs that. At least I hope it does. Because, you know, I'm, uh, I... Not only my own experience, but a lot of the coaches on our staff have been through it. So, um, yeah, we, we're we're moving it in the right direction. We just got to keep it keep it going. You know, I told you, coming out of Northwestern, the tip of the plane was kind of. Then we kind of pulled it up, and then this one really in, and we got to pull it up again, right? That's the consistency is what lacks in a program when you're building it. When you get it going, then that consistency is something that you know because it becomes the expectation it's not a you know it's not the exception when you win a game in the big 10 right that becomes the expectation we haven't gotten there yet you won a couple of games away from home is there something about this group that likes playing on the road i don't know that's a good question i think it may have to do a little bit of uh, no disrespect to the teams we played on the road but we played some really good teams at home so uh, some of that is is probably schedule getting back to when we talk about the inconsistency can you kind of tell going into a game or afterwards, like, it, it's not going to go well this week or hindsight you can realize where things went wrong? You know what you think you can as a coach? More in hindsight. I knew that was going to happen because of this. You know, Bear Bryant didn't know. I remember when Coach Bryant was alive, Joe, Coach Paterno had told the story that Bear told him once. He said, look, I, tra- I stopped trying to figure that out years ago. I don't know if we're going to be any good today. 
every game's its own event. And I think that's where I am. A long time ago, I kind of, because maybe because I heard that Coach Paterno say that, um, I just try to take every game and try to do our very best, prepare the best we can, and then coach it the best we can. And, you know, there are ebbs and flows. Momentum, football is a game of momentum. And trying to manage those shifts and maybe even create a few of those shifts is a coach's job. And uh, there's sometimes I've done a good job at that, and then sometimes I, I look back and say, man, I should have I should have done this or that. But, you know, I'm sure we all have that. These are the two bonus, right? That's what I thought. Without Crookshank, I'm uh, kick return. Would it be continue to be Chris Long, and and could Young Blood get a little bit more of a? Uh, and then I guess on punt return, it would continue to be Avery Young. Those are all good questions. I'm going to have to talk with our special team staff. We've done them all, so we can probably use whoever we'd like. Um, some of that has to do with what scheme you're going to use, you know, and then you try to fit. You know, this scheme is what we have the best chance of executing with the other 10 guys. So now maybe this guy's the best returner or that guy's the best returner. And then sometimes it doesn't matter. You just put the best returner, period. Is there anything that you've seen that caused the tackling to, at times to become inconsistent? Well, some of the people changed, right, because injuries occurred. So maybe they weren't quite the same level tacklers as the starters were. Um, I think the out, you know, the, it shouldn't matter, right? You should play every play exactly the same. But I think people get a little weary when the score is what it is. And, uh, you know, the old me would never, ever admit that. But I think that's human nature. And that's where you have to really motivate your guys to, 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 to play. And some of it is, you know, when we went back and looked at it, there's a lot of things that shouldn't have been. But we just didn't, didn't execute the way that, that we uh, – that we practiced. Do they have something to do with it? Sure they do. They make you think a little bit, oh, maybe I got to do this or maybe I got to do that, you know, when they're really good. Um, and you don't. You need to do your job. And that's that's our whole thing, right? Chop your job. And um, if we can stay focused on that, coaches and players alike, I think we have a chance to be successful every week. Um, and as crazy as it is when you have a 52-3 to game, but you look it back and some of the reasons things happened didn't have to happen. But they did. And that's, that's why you win and lose games, right? There's two teams, and I know only one can win, and we certainly didn't. So I will, uh, I'll see you guys later in the week. I appreciate you, again, covering us, and uh, look forward to getting out to Indiana and trying to win a football game.